Brody, uh, Sophie, the day is here. Sophie, you look absolutely amazing and beautiful. You make a wonderful bride. And Brody, you clean up surprisingly well. Uh, we're all kind of curious how that happened. Uh, but let me just say that this place is literally full of so many people that have came here from so many places and rearranged their lives because they want to come out and show their love and support of you guys today and the marriage that's about to take place. So I just want you guys to take a deep breath and take this moment in because there's so many people here that love and support the both of you guys. Uh, friends and family, my name is, there we go. Now we're, now we're rolling, come on. Uh, friends and family, my name is Andrew. Uh, I'm a pastor at City Light Church in Fort Collins. I get the pleasure of these two coming to join me here pretty soon. And on behalf of the couple, I just wanna say welcome and thank you guys so much for coming out today to support and to be here and to show your love for the couple. But before we dive into the rest of the ceremony, I just wanna start by praying for today. So if you guys would join me in prayer, that'd be awesome. Uh, Jesus, we gather to celebrate uh, your grace and your goodness. And you are the God who can make dead things alive. God, you are able to restore and redeem. And today we just wanna pause and say thank you for the way that you've led Brody and Sophie into a relationship with you. And God, we thank you for how you've transformed their lives. God, you've been so faith faithful to each and every one of us, and we just want to say thank you. Uh, so Jesus, I ask that this time would not only be a celebration of Brody and Sophie's love for each other, but God, that this might be a celebration of your love that you have for each of us. God, I pray that for the next 70, 80 years, you would guard them and protect them and empower them to have an amazing marriage that's centered upon you. So God, we love you and we thank you for today. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're here. We're in this beautiful place. Everybody looks good, but we have to start this day by asking the question, how did we get here? And I just want to start by addressing the question that every single person in this place is wondering, and that's how in the world did Brody get Sophie? So let's start there. Now, like all good love stories that happened in 2020, this love story began with one young person sliding into the other's DMs. Now, for everybody above 30, that is a direct message, okay, on Instagram. Uh, so Sophie had the confidence to direct message Brody. She reached out to him, and she said, so dot, 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 coffee, question mark. Short and sweet like most good DMs. And that's where this love story began. Uh, but it wasn't where it began, but that was where you guys reconnected. You guys had previously dated but you guys decided to give things a second chance and you guys met at Mojava and you guys connected for hours and you guys just caught up on life and what had been going on for the past couple years. And I love when you guys shared this with me, you said that you shared everything with each other that had been going on the past couple years, the good, the bad, the ugly. And what I love about this is that from the beginning of your guys' second new relationship together, you guys were open and honest and transparent and that's qualities that I see in you guys today still. And I think it's gonna be a really awesome quality that you guys have as a foundation of your marriage. So you guys got together, Mojava, hit it off. And then you guys hung out later that night. And Brody, I love my boy right here, especially as a pastor, invited her to church the next morning, come on, uh, and said, hey, would you come with me to church? You guys hung out there. And then you also hung out with some friends and your boy Dion, uh, his wife, shout out Rebecca, wherever you're at, invited everybody to come and hang out for the 4th of July. You guys continued to hit it off. And then in the words of Brody, you shot your shot about a month later and you guys began to date and there it was and you guys have never looked back. Uh, but obviously a lot has happened since then. You guys dated for almost a year and then Brody mustered up the confidence to shoot his shot. You guys went on a romantic date and the date ended with a chalkboard that said, so dot, 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 marry me. And he proposed, and obviously she said yes, and we're standing here today, and that DM message came full circle, right? Isn't that beautiful <laughs> how God can use that? But a lot has happened since then, and I've actually had the privilege to get to know you guys more so as an engaged couple uh, than in your dating relationship. And over the past year of really getting to know you guys, I've seen you guys come out to a vision trip to Fort Collins and take a huge step of faith to say, God, we want to trust you and take this big step of faith in our life. I've seen you guys fight for holiness and purity in your relationship, even when it wasn't the easy thing to do because you guys wanted to honor God in that. 
And I've seen you guys in so many ways, not perfectly, but by God's grace, just center your lives on him. And it's been an absolute privilege to watch you guys continue to grow in Christ as you pursue him and pursue each other. So it's been a privilege to get to walk with you guys over the past year. And what I love about your guys' love for one another is that it's proven. Like your love, I don't think you guys are standing here today with these rose-tinted glasses of what marriage is going to look like, but I think you guys have been through highs and lows together already, and you guys have leaned into God, and you guys have leaned into each other, and it's beautiful. And you guys have such a strong foundation for the marriage that you guys are going into. So as I was thinking about today, you guys have such a proven love already, and I'm so excited to see how that proven love for each other is going to show itself in marriage. So here you guys are. All the waiting, all the patience, the highs and lows. Jesus has brought you through everything to today. And today we get to celebrate your marriage. And it's been a joy to watch you guys journey. And today we get to enter into that lifelong covenant with one another. And I've seen so many amazing qualities about each of you guys. Everybody here that knows and loves you know these are amazing people. There could be a million and one awesome personality traits that I name. But I want to pause and I just want to affirm one trait that I see in each of you guys that really, I think, just embodies who you are. Friends, family, tell me if you agree with these, okay? Sophie, as I thought about you, the one word that came to mind was passionate. And you are a passionate woman. You are a fighter. And I mean that in the best way possible. I have seen you passionately love Brody. You fight for what you love and you don't hide it. You show your love deeply and authentically over and over again. And I know that that's going to be something that you're going to bring into this marriage and you're going to passionately love Brody as his wife. And that love, that passionate love that you're going to have for Brody as you respect him and encourage him, that is going to be the greatest source of encouragement that he will experience in his life is that passionate love that you get to show him. And I just wanted to encourage you today, that passionate love that you have, that's a quality that Jesus had. And that's a quality that Jesus has given to you. And I just want to encourage you that it's because of Jesus' passionate love that he's had for you that you get to show that same passionate love to Brody. And Brody, as I thought about you, the word that came to mind uh, was steadfast. And the thing that I love about you is that it's not superficial, kind of like your guys' love for one another, that it's been proven. You've been through hard things in your life and you've just remained a steadfast person and get to do premarital with you guys. I saw the way that uh, Sophie looks at you and she looks at you like you're her rock and, and her anchor. And she just looks at you in this way that she knows that no matter what's gonna happen in this world, there's gonna be hard things. She can lean into you because you are a steadfast man. And Brody, that steadfastness, I wanna affirm it in you. I wanna call out greatness in you. And I also wanna remind you that that's also a quality that Jesus has given you. And as you guys journey together in this life, it's because of Jesus' steadfast love towards you that I have no doubt that you are going to show steadfast love to her for the rest of your life. So guys, I just want to encourage you. Don't ever lose that passionate love. Don't lose that steadfastness. And remember that both of those things are things that God has given to you that are going to make for an awesome marriage. Now, friends, family, today is very much so about Brody and Sophie's love story. But the couples also asked me to point out how this points to a greater love story about God and his people. So at this time, I just want to share one verse from scripture that reminds us about how Brody and Sophie's love for one another reminds us of the greatest love story that has ever been seen. So today I just want to read this one verse. It's Romans uh, chapter 5 verse 8 and it says this, God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God showed his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for, died for us. Okay, so we all know it's really easy to say things, right? But it's a lot harder to actually live them out. So one day in my marriage, I decided that I really wanted to show my wife, Rachel, that I loved her. So I got all my savings together, and I went and bought the biggest engagement ring that I could possibly buy. And it wasn't very big because I'm in full-time ministry, okay? Okay. But I wanted to show her my love. I didn't just want to say it. I wanted to prove it to her. So I went and bought the nicest ring I could buy. And I got down on one knee and I said, would you marry me? Could we spend the rest of our lives together? Now, I imagine that many of you here have heard that Jesus loves you. I'd imagine you've heard it in a church or seen it on a billboard or a bumper sticker. Or you saw that weird guy saying it from the street corner. 
But if you haven't, I want to say to you today, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves each of us personally right where we're at. Now, I'd imagine that some of us here might be thinking, okay, that sounds great, Andrew, but prove it. Anyone can say that they love somebody, but actions speak louder than words. You might be wondering, has God actually ever shown his love for us? Now, Romans 5, 8, the verse that we just read, joyfully declares that the God of the universe, the same God that breathed galaxies into existence, the same God that knit together our human anatomy, the same God who gives life, showed his love for us in the most extravagant way possible, more extravagant than this beautiful dress or this tux that you're looking so good in, more beautiful than the nicest diamond ring in the world. The God of the universe showed his love for us. How? He died for us. The God of the universe came and gave everything to die to pay for our sins that we might have an eternal relationship with him. And it's the most beautiful love story that's ever been written. Now, if you'll notice in this verse, Romans 5, 8, it says not only did he die for us, but he died while we were still sinning, while we were still sinners. So what that means, and this has massive implications for marriage, by the way, what this means is that Jesus died for us while we were still at our worst. And that's the terrible misconception that most people have about the church. See, we have this misconception that says, well, God only loves the clean, but not the dirty. God loves the person who's put their life together and goes to church, but not the messy. God loves the person who reads their Bible every day, but not the person who is struggling with sin. And this verse shows us that God shows his love, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's this unconditional, beautiful love. So God didn't show his love when we were all prettied up and looking fine, like you guys are today. But God showed his love for us when we were at our worst. And that we get to believe and receive to that message and have eternal life. And Brody and Soph, I've seen this gospel message transform your lives. Just in the past year since I've known you, I've seen you guys grow together because of the grace of Jesus and it's beautiful. Okay, but here's the question. What does this have to do with marriage? Andrew, do you know how hot it is? <laughs> it's warm. Why is this guy talking about Jesus? I thought we were talking about Brody and Sophie. But here's the thing. Jesus's love for us makes us ask the question, how will you guys show your love for one another? How will you guys show your love for one another? So Brody, how are you going to show your love for Sophie in marriage. Because right now she's wearing a beautiful dress, makeup on, everyone's happy. It's your special day. But married men, not every day is going to look like this, right? It won't always be like this. And I would propose that the greatest way that you will show your love for Sophie isn't going to be today. But I'd propose that the greatest way that you're going to show your love for Sophie is when she's so mad at you that she's lying on the kitchen floor and she won't even come to bed and you move towards her in grace and love, I would propose that the greatest way that you show her love, your love for her, is that when she's not all dolled up without makeup on, but she's just wearing sweatpants and she's laying on the couch and you go and tell her how beautiful she is and that you delight in her. I propose that the greatest way that you'll ever love her is that when she's having a hard time and she's not serving you or caring for you maybe as you'd hope, and you say, I'm gonna move towards her anyway. And I'm going to pursue her recklessly because God has gifted me with this woman and I'm going to move towards her in that way. So Jesus' love shows us that the truest form of love is actually loving somebody when it's most difficult. And Brody, today, that's the gift and the calling that you're stepping into is to love this beautiful woman that God has gifted you with as Jesus has first loved us. So when she doesn't do the right thing, when she seems distant or bitter, I want to challenge you, continue to move towards her in love in response to God's love for you. Now, Sophie, how will you show your love for Brody? Because I'd also propose that the greatest way you're going to love him isn't today. It's not going to be on the honeymoon, but I propose that it's probably going to be sometime into marriage when Brody is busy or not caring for you how you'd hope or whatever is going on in life. And you say, hey, I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to push back. I'm not going to try to earn his love. But in response to the love that Jesus has given you, you move towards him and continue to respect him and uplift him and encourage him as your husband. So guys, marriage, as you guys know, it's not always going to be easy. 
there's going to be suffering, but that suffering will produce endurance, and that endurance character and that character hope. No matter if you guys are on the mountaintop or the valley, the reality is that the grace of God is going to sustain you guys for the rest of your lives, and you can love each other through your faith in Jesus. So that's the commitment that you guys get to make to each other today before God, before all of these loved ones, that for the rest of your lives, no matter what you face, you are going to cling to the grace of Jesus and recklessly love one another. So it's with this in mind, Brody and Sophie, that they've chosen to exchange their vows. And before God and their loved ones, they're going to enter into a holy covenant of marriage. You ready, Brody? All right, cool. All right, Brody, if you'd repeat after me. Uh, I, Brody. I, Brody. Take you, Sophie, as my wife. Take you, Sophie, as my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. Better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. Awesome. All right, Sophie, if you'd repeat after me. Hi, Sophie. Hi, Sophie. Take you, Brody, as my husband. Take you, Brody, as my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. Awesome. Great work. Uh, Brody and Sophie have chosen to exchange rings as a symbolic confirmation of their promises to each other. Uh, so if we could have the rings at this time. Awesome. Now these rings are an outward and visible sign of an inward reality. So these rings simply serve as a reminder that you guys have chosen and committed yourself to one another till death do you, do you part. So Brody, uh, please place the ring on Sophie's finger and repeat after me. Sophie. Sophie. <laughs> I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol. As a symbol. Not only of my love for you. Not only of my love for you. And my promise to be your faithful husband. And my promise to be your faithful husband. But as a reminder that God. As a reminder that God. Is the center of our marriage. Is the center of our marriage. Because Christ first loved me. Because Christ first loved me. I love you. I love you. Awesome. <laughs> and Sophie, if you'd please place the ring on Brody's finger and repeat after me. Brody. Brody. I give you this ring as a symbol. I give you this ring as a symbol. Not only of my love for you. Not only for my love. Not only of my love for you. Only of my love for you. And my promise to be your faithful wife. And my promise to be your faithful wife. But as a reminder that God. But as a reminder that God. Is the center of our marriage. Is the center of our marriage. Because Christ first loved me. Because Christ first loved me. I love you. I love you. Awesome. Nice. Cool. All right, so Brody and Sophie have decided to take a special moment together uh, to braid a cord of three strands and pray with one another as a symbol of God always being the third string that binds their marriage together.
Awesome. Well, Brody and Sophie, uh, since you have entered into the covenant of marriage, I now declare you to be husband and wife, and what God has joined together, let no man separate. Brody, you may kiss your bride. Awesome. All right, I present to you guys for the very, very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Murphy. Taxi 